نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ تیرا خدا کوئی اور ہے نہ میرا خدا کوئی اور ہے یہ جو راستے ہیں جدا جدا یہ معاملہ کوئی اور ہے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آمد رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام خاتم النوین وبعد ویلکم تو the next episode on building bridges between the faiths with myself, Rafiq Hassan, and ITV. Remember last week we, we uh, spoke about how uh, Islam is the universal religion and therefore it uses the universal greetings. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, the greetings that are used by all the prophets from the time of Adam and Abraham and Noah and Moses and Jesus and the final message of Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Assalamu alaikum. We spoke about, uh, you know, how Islam, aspects of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Quran, and many other things, uh, apart from the five principles, are mentioned in, in the Bible, in the Old and New Testament. We started the mini-series last week, uh, and uh, we want to continue this week, uh, because apart from the five principles of Islam, which is the faith uh, and the, the salah, the prayer, and the fasting, Uh, and the charity and the Hajj, which we discussed in detail over the the last few episodes. Now we're shifting it to broaden it, uh, that uh, not only is the Salah and the prayer and the fasting there, but, uh, you know, other aspects of Islam uh, and and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is in the the Bible. And if we want to begin with, just to recap, let's, if we go to our screen, you know, we spoke about, Uh, the covenant of the prophets. If you look at that slide in chapter 3, verse 81 and 2, we started off by saying, you know, uh, to recap that uh, God Almighty Allah so once had a covenant of the prophets uh, in, the, uh, in the realm of soul before coming into the world, uh, sending them down into the world. All of us were in the state of soul before we came into the world. And he said he's going to appoint them as prophets and they were to help one another. And then uh, they spoke about the final messenger and all of them are to believe in him as well. And then we spoke about in Isaiah 21, uh, chapter 20 and verse 13 to 17, of uh, the burden upon Arabia and how the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was, and his companions were going to be driven out from there. Uh, and, you know, the children of Kidar, who, then Kidar is the descendant of Ishmael. He's the, uh, you know, he's the son of Ishmael, peace be upon him. And then how finally the prophet was successful. So all this is mentioned in Isaiah about the burden on Arabia and the children of Kidar, who is the children of Ishmael. And how finally, you know, that, that verse, you look at at the bottom, for the Lord, the God of Israel had spoken it. So the Bible is talking that the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, who is the God of everyone, there's no separate God for the Israelites and a separate God for the Muslims and a separate God for the Chinese. You know, God is one God, you know. And, and he was talking about, the, you know, the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the burden on Arabia. And so that was that verse. And if we go next to the next verse in the Bible, we spoke about the, the revelation of the Quran. Remember, Isaiah 29, 12 spoke about uh, the, the Quran being first revealed in the cave and uh, the Prophet Peace be upon him said, I can't read because he could not read and write. And exactly what happened in the cave of Hira is mentioned in Isaiah 29, 12. You know, the whole revelation of the Quran. And then Isaiah spoke and he said, the book is delivered to him that is not literate saying read. And he says, I cannot read. That's exactly what the Prophet did when the angel Gabriel, uh, you know, came with the first revelation of the Quran. And then we, it also, we spoke in, in last week about Isaiah 28, 10, 11, uh, where it says that the Quran was revealed over 23 years, a little bit here a little bit there you know all different places and he was with the stammering lips and another tongue remember we said isaiah peace be upon was also saying that this last prophet who is coming with this quran he is going to be in another tongue because these were israelite prophets speaking hebrew and aramaic and this other tongue is the arabic tongue which the prophet peace be upon him was going to come uh, and it is prophesized and this was also prophesized we said in deuteronomy 18 18 and 18 19 showing that even the bible is pointing towards Arabia, pointing towards the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talking about such in fine detail about the Quran and the revelation of the Quran. And we even mentioned how uh, the, the Waraka bin Nofal, the uncle of the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Khatija, I don't know, when she took him, you know, after that incident in the cave, 
when she took him to the, the, one of the senior priests, Waraka bin Nofal, who was her uncle, when he heard this incident that in the cave, an angel came and made him, he says, you are the final messenger that is prophesied in our scriptures, you know, and you are the final messenger. Let's go, let's proceed today's uh, session we're carrying on let's go to our next slide and uh, this side is going more in detail telling you that this prophet the prophet muhammad peace be upon him will be victorious you know in isaiah 42 11 and 13 behold the former things are to come to pass and the new things do i declare before they spring forth i tell you of them sung unto the lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth till the villages lit up their voice, the villages that Kedar dot inhabit. You see, the villages that Kedar, Kedar, who is that? The son of Ishmael, the son of Abraham, the Arabs we're talking about. And let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountain. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praises in the island. So you can see here again, the, the, the mountain, Mecca is in a mountain, in a valley. You know, the valley, the Bible in Psalms speaks of the valley of Bekka, the mountains of Mecca around, surrounding the Kaaba. All this is fitting so, you know, clearly with this whole story of uh, the, the, the final prophet, the prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, coming with a new song and a new, uh, you know, a new tongue. And if you go to the next one, again, about being victorious again, remember, this is very important, these predictions. You know, in Isaiah 6, uh, chapter 60, verse 70, all the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. They come up with acceptance of mine altar, and, and I will glorify the house of my glory. So this house is the Kaaba, you know, the house that Abraham built, all right? And then here, the, the, all the flocks of Kedar, we know that although the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was uh, expelled. And remember the, uh, the, the, the Hijrah, he was expelled. And by the way, just to remind ourselves, the first expulsion or the first migration was to, to Africa. The first hijra was to Abyssinia. That time it was called Abyssinia. It was Africa. You remember the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, there's an African king. He's an African king. He's a Christian king, but he's a good king. He's, he's a good man. He's a good king. And he'll give you all asylum and, and as a refugees. And that's exactly what happened. And, you know, down the line, the, the king, Negus, alhamdulillah, accepted the message of the prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam. And then the next hijra was to Medina, to Munawara. He had to leave his city of Mecca, the same city that Isaiah was talking about. But look, the, even Isaiah is prophesizing that he will come back there victorious. He will come back and conquer. All the flocks of Kidar shall be gathered together to thee. The victory. Now, if you go to the Quranic verse, uh, you know, in the Quran to our slide, this is in chapter 112. When comes the help of Allah and victory, and you see the people entering into the religion, the final religion, in crowds, in big masses, celebrate the praises of your Lord and pray for your forgiveness, for he is of retaining in grace most merciful. Now, you know, I think perhaps at this point also, uh, it is something very interesting. Uh, perhaps I should mention it. We will mention it in, 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 in future episodes. But this triumphant victory and entering into uh, Mecca after the years of persecution. Many of the Prophet Salaam's companions were killed, were martyred. Uh, you know, we know the, all the whole uh, history of that struggle. But when he entered Mecca triumphant, you know, because his message spread and, and most of the children of Kidar, the house, the people of Arabia and surrounding, uh, they, you know, they, they came onto his side, they accepted uh, the message of the Prophet Salaam, and he came victorious. He had all the power at that point when he came into Mecca again. He had all the power, he had the army, he had the might, and you know, the, the Meccans gave up. He could have taken revenge. He could have massacred them. But you'll notice it was the most peaceful and triumphant uh, entry and victory the world has ever seen. He granted amnesty to all and he forgave them a bloodless entry into Mecca because he was the mercy to all mankind. So I think this is very important for us just to mention in passing. There's another very interesting prophecy. <clears throat> if we go into the next slide, uh, this is also very interesting concerning the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In Jeremiah, uh, the Prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah, peace be upon him, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it is stated, For pass over the isles of Chittim, and see, and send unto Kidar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing as a nation change their gods, which are yet no gods. Right? 
but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit them. So he changed, he made the Arabs to change idol worships. They were idol worshippers. There are many other verses. That's what it's talking about there, that this uh, prophet who is the descendant of Kidar, who is, going, who is the descendant of Ishmael, you know, the Arabs were idol worshippers. Now, this history, history has proven this. You know, they had 360 idols, made idols, statues made, and they were worshipping idols. And, you know, idol worship is not allowed in the Bible and in the Quran. You know, it's not allowed. Uh, but the Prophet ﷺ came and he changed them. Now, look what a prophecy this is, that he came and changed them from the, from the idol worshipping that they were, you know. A prophecy that came, but was finally fulfilled, you know. So, inshallah, I think, you know, these are some very interesting prophecies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mission, his work, his struggles. Uh, so, stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, we are continuing with this uh, mini series of uh, the prophecy and the mentioning of Islam and the Prophet, peace be upon him, and other aspects of Islam in the Bible, in the Old and New Testament. And just before the break, we spoke about the idol worshipping. But let me go to, uh, you know, this opposition that we spoke about. You know, we had these various uh, people around trying to, you know, uh, suppress the mission and work of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Where, where does this stem from? Believe it or not, uh, you know, besides the Quran, in the Bible, this has been mentioned in the Bible. If we go to our next slide, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 5, it is stated, you know, the opposition was due to hatred and jealousy. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that has cast you out from my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to our joy and they shall be ashamed. Now, here it is mentioned that, you know, the, the, the hatred, the brethren that hated you. Now, who are the brethren of the Arabs? Is the Israelites. You know, very well, this has been the problem. Uh, if you take the children of Israel, for instance, Jacob, Jacob alayhi salam. Right, he's called Jacob, but in, in, we call him Yaqub in the, in, the, in, the, in the Quran. And there's a whole chapter, you know, he had these 12 sons. And uh, one of his youngest sons was Joseph, Yusuf, right? Was the son uh, of Yaqub, alayhi salam, of Jacob. Now, there's a whole chapter 12. The whole chapter is the whole story of Yusuf, of Joseph. I'm talking about within the, the, the 12 sons of Jacob, the Israelite sons. The other 11 brothers were jealous of their own blood brother, Yusuf, Jake, uh, you know, Jacob's sons were of Yusuf, who, the, you know, uh, they were jealous of him. And they took him and threw him in the well. You read the whole story of the Quran, and then they so sold him off to slavery. Now, I don't want to go into that whole story, but I'm trying to tell you how your own brothers can be jealous of you. We experience this in, in daily life. You know, this jealousy and hatred is... is, is now, imagine here... The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the final messenger, is coming now from the Arab, from the Ishmaelite branch, and not the Isaac branch. You see now? And now the, this hatred is starting to come. You know, I remember we gave you the story of uh, Waraka bin Nofal, the Christian priest. He was the monk. He was honest enough when he heard the story of the revelation of the archangel gave in the cave of Hira to the Prophet. He said, yes. I recognize that it's in Isaiah. He, we know about you. And he was good natured. But there are others who didn't. So if you go back to the slide, the Quran about this hatred and jealousy is sometimes the root cause of the problem. You find that the Quran says, Verily we have brought the truth to you, but most of you have a hatred for the truth. You see, the truth has come, but most people have a hatred for the truth. In fact, there are other verses here in the Quran, chapter 45, verse 17. It's stated here, and we granted them clear signs in the face of religion. It was only after knowledge has been granted to them that they fell into schisms through insolent envy among themselves. Verily, the Lord will judge between them on the day of judgment as to those matters in which they did set up differences. They're due to selfish envy. Now, you know, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, deep uh, 
quality that human beings have to get rid of themselves is the hatred and jealousy uh, uh, between one another for name and fame. You know, all these things that the ego comes in. But, and this happens in religion. And this was one of the reasons that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was getting opposition, opposition not only from the Jews at the time, the children of Israel, or some of the Christians of the time. His own countrymen, his own tribe, you know, the leaders of his tribe, you know, his own uncle, Abu Lahab, you know, was opposing him. Why? Because he felt threatened now of his position, you see, even though it was his blood relation. So this hatred does, it cuts across, you know, families, it, it, it affects brothers, sisters, aunties, and then it also is a sickness that cuts across religion and tribes. And I think this is one of the things that <clears throat> even in the world today, you know, there's prejudice uh, and hatred. And the Quran is very clear on this that we must not let hatred and jealousy, you know, uh, suppress the facts. We must always make sure that the facts are always there. And I think, you know, the, the world is in, a, in, in great need of this. If we take another verse in the Quran, I think this is also something I want to come back as we're rounding up <clears throat> this segment because we're going to go into uh, the, the comments, but we have a guest kind of be coming in, uh, you know, tonight uh, in, in our program. Let's go to the slide and, and, and talk uh, look at another beautiful verse in the Quran in chapter 42 to verse 13 and 14. Here, look at what God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. The same religion has he established for you as that which he enjoined on Noah and that which he sent by inspiration to thee and that we enjoined on Abraham and Moses and Jesus. What was that message? That you, you remain steadfast in religion and you make no divisions therein. To those who worship other things other than Allah, hard is the way to which you cause them. God Almighty Allah chooses to himself those whom he pleases and guides to himself those who turn to him. And they became divided only after knowledge has reached them. Why? Through selfish envy as between themselves. This is the problem. Jealousy and hatred and envy. Through selfish envy as between themselves. And had it not been for a word that went forth before them, the Lord tending to them appointed term, the matter would have been settled between them. But truly those who have inherited the book after them are in suspicious, disquieting doubt concerning it. So here the Quran is very, it's the same message. The Prophet ﷺ came with the same message, but the succeeding generations didn't want to accept the other prophet or the other message because of these issues of power, glory, uh, uh, vested interest, economy, and what and what have you. So I think, uh, but at the, despite all this, all this, God's plan will supersede. And what does Isaiah tell us? If we go back to our concluding few slides, Isaiah tells us in chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Right, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Right, and there it is talking again about the the the, the, the government. The Prophet came and established the government, and that he will be successful. And that's why the Quran in chapter nine, verse thirty-two and thirty-three, and in Quran chapter forty-eight, uh, verse uh, verse uh, twenty-eight, it is talking about you know how the the, the message came and be. Perfected. Fain would they extinguish Allah's light with their mouths, but Allah will not allow but that his light should be perfected, even though the disbelievers may detest it. It is he who sent the messenger with the guidance in the religion of truth to proclaim it over all other ways of life, even though the pagans may detest it. And then the same verse carries on in 48, 28, the same trend, and it ends up by saying, and, and enough is God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a witness to this. So what we are saying is that the, the, the word of God and the, and the message of God and the plan of God will supersede at the end. What is needed for us in building bridges is to come and say, look, we are all the children, you know, uh, of Adam. We, it is the same God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sent the prophets to us. And we need to all come and build these bridges uh, as if we go to our banners. And I will end as we go, we're getting ready to go into our interview and our segment. You know, we are all the children of Adam, right? We all came. Islam is one humanity. We are one family. And Islam talks about we shall love all mankind, regardless of religion, color, nationality. We are all created by the same one God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we're going to be entering into our uh, segment just now, where we're going to be doing, uh, the, we won't be doing any uh, comments and questions this, uh, 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 this episode because we have an interview with one of our guests, one of our viewers. So here's the details on the screen for you to take down. 
you know, send us your details, your comments. Uh, that's what we want. Let's set up, uh, let's set up our own local uh, programs in our local areas. We also have a, a, another number, 86 7 This is a 24-hour call center. It's a 24-hour recording. You know, you, it's a voice recording. You phone in and you leave. It's a, it'll accept your message. You can just leave whatever details you want and, and you know, we will respond to you. And, and this is what, you know, the world needs. The world needs, you know, uh, to us to come together. Uh, the, the Israelites and the, and the Arab world, you know, the, the greatest conflict is taking right now in the Middle East is at that spot. And I remember I was talking once to the American ambassador. And I told him, you know, and, and the, the, it's a potential right now, the middle, even right now as we speak, the Middle East can be a potential third world spark, you know, a conflict that can come there. And I told him, but, you know, why should they be fighting? They are, they are cousins. They are brethren. You know, they both uh, are, they, they have the same grandfather. Baba Mkulu is Abraham. Peace be upon him. It's a family, man. They are one family. And you know what a nice reply the ambassador, American ambassador gave? He told me, you know what, Mr. Hassan? You know what, Sheikh Hassan? Family feuds are sometimes the worst feuds. Haven't you seen when the, when the wool, when the father or grandfather leaves the wool, how the other children and brothers, the story starts? Why is this? No, that must come to me. That must come to me. And then those who loved one another, suddenly they're starting to hate another and starting to cause conflicts. And I think if we just uh, remove this self-interest, if we lo- remove from us, you know, all this vested interest and power and glory, uh, you know, uh, from the, the equation, and see the truth. Because, you know, we did that one verse there, you know, that uh, sometimes they say the truth sometimes is a bitter pill to swallow. You know how, how true that saying is, you know, that sometimes the truth is a bitter pill to swallow because of what we may have preconceived ideas and we don't want to give up and you don't want to let up what we've been programmed. But, you know, stay tuned. You know, after the break, we've got an interesting guest, an interesting interview will be coming up as promised to you and you, the other viewers, you have, you know, also to write to us and interact with us and we'll contact you with this program after the break. Stay tuned. We'll have that interesting interview. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, as we are proceeding, we are in that segment where uh, we are going to, you know, normally we take your comments and then we do a Q&A session. And as promised to you, you know, we uh, did get uh, comments. We're still getting a lot of comments via our email and our SMS lines. And we have a call center line now. And we thank you, the viewers, for that. But if you recall a few episodes back, we did tell you that uh, we received a comment from a Mr. Shedrick. And, uh, you know, uh, he indicated... Uh, also that he uh, would like to get a bit more interactive and involved with the Building Bridges program on ITV. Well, the good news for the viewers, we have Mr. Shedrick Madingwana right in the studio. And I would like to welcome him, uh, Mr. Shedrick. Welcome to ITV show. Thank you very much, sir. And I would like to firstly thank you for uh, taking your time, you know, Johannesburg, we Durbanites, uh, we can't maneuver with all your freeways and the busy roads, but I would thank you for taking the time, taking the trouble to, to come to the ITV Jews and to come onto the Building Bridges program. And uh, we really appreciate that effort made on your part. I think uh, the place to start, uh, you know, uh, is how did you... Uh, you know, you being a, a, from a Christian background, which we'll come to later on, how did you uh, come to bump into this uh, DSTV channel 347, which is the ITV program? Uh, so just let us know about that, because you are, I think, from uh, Soweto, born and brought up in Soweto. You are like me and you. We are from the same era. We, we are off the soil. Mm-hmm. We grew up in the apartheid era. And, uh, you know, uh, for the benefit of the viewers, we were chatting, Shedrick and me, and uh, very fondly, we spoke about uh, Mr. T.W. Kambule, mm-hmm. who was a great, great, teacher. great teacher in, in the school. And you had the opportunity to be being with him. By the way, he 
tutored my my wife okay. in meds uh, <laughs> during those apartheid years in Lenesia from Soweto okay. and many other children. And I, it, so what makes a man like you, what made you, uh, you know, to, to, to get into this DSTV, uh, ITV channel? Um, <clears throat> I, must, I must start saying, first of all, thank you for providing the opportunity uh, to come and have a chat with you. Uh, I am one person who, who likes reading. Um, I'm one person who likes exposure. So um, I did not go to ITV as, as a mistake or by accident. Um, basically, every Sunday, I'll spend two hours, three hours watching some of the programs on ITV uh, because they are very informative. Okay? Um, also, having worked with a lot of Muslim people, we have always had some form of discussion and the interest to know more about Islam. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it, so it, it comes from there. That, okay, well, I must say again, uh, uh, if I can call you Brother Cedric, you know, we from that generation, mm -hmm. uh, where we still love reading, sadly, uh, it's dying down among the, the younger generation. This TV and iPads, and they, they, are, they are finding that there's less reading being done. Well, I'm sure the challenge is to make sure is to continuously encourage our young people mm. uh, to to love books, to empower themselves. Okay, um, television is okay. However, television must also be controlled. Yes, as uh, everything. You know, as as parents, we need to um, limit the the time our children spend yes. on television. Um, and they must spend more time on books. And we also need to reverse. That, this is very important. Mm. We also need to reverse some of the things that the, the white people in this country, you know, <clears throat> have done with, with our brains. Yes. Um, you know, I grew knowing that um, in this country, white people said, if you want to hide something from black people, you need to do it... Um, through a book, <laughs> okay? Yes. Uh, and we need to reverse all those kind of things. No, it's very true uh, what you're saying, you know, and um, uh, I want to just come, uh, you know, to straight to when you said, you know, white people and the, and the colonizers we went through, first British colonialism mm -hmm. and then the Dutch or apartheid. But uh, it, it somehow the other, Brother Sarah, it put us into boxes at that time you know, we grew up in Indian areas, so-called, and African and colored, so-called. But now we have our democracy. And I think uh, uh, what is lacking, what we need to be doing, and that's why I thank you for coming. And I think, I hope there are more people like you who is open-minded. What is your impression of the Muslim community? Uh, you know, uh, all right, you have taken the effort as an individual and because you, you love reading and researching, that's mm -hmm. your forte. Uh, I think you told me you, which church, which Christian church? Well, uh, <clears throat> I belong to the African uh, Christian churches. Mm -hmm. um, um, basically, those are your indigenous uh, African, African okay. churches. Apostolic churches. Apostolic churches. Apostolic churches. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, the, what is your view? You said you have because of your work. Uh, you are a professional man, also move around. You, you're doing in a, in a allied with the building and all these industries that we spoke. Mm -hmm. What is your impression 20 years down the democracy, the Muslim community, African community, Christian community? You think we've done enough to come to understand each other? Certainly not. Certainly not. Um, <clears throat> I, I think... Um, Particular, um, the the Muslim community have not been quite open um, to to discuss Islam as a way of life and the beauty about Islam and how Islam can change one's life. Therefore, the the Muslim community has, has failed in in the, in the in that aspect. Um, most of black people, they know Islam as an Indian religion. Okay. 
Okay, that impression is still there. That impression is still there because okay. the, the because the Islamic people mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> are still interested in their little corners. Yes, they are not. They are not reaching out. Okay, and you know, I want to mention uh, a, 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 a a man who is doing so much for humanity. You know, the gift of the givers. Right. That's what most of the the Muslim community should be doing because some of the problems that we experience during apartheid, they're still there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Some, some Muslim people are quite fortunate uh, to, to, to lend a help, um, to, to give, mm -hmm. okay? To propagate Islam not as an Indian religion. Well, you know, this is a very interesting thing you're saying when you said, like, uh, you see, I like the point you make when you say that uh, you, the impression that you still get is that we are still in our boxes. Definitely. And I think rightfully so, because one of the aims of Building Bridges uh, program, and we must thank ITV for having, uh, uh, you know, accepted this program, because exactly, and, and you coming, because we need to take that extra step. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, service to humanity, you know, if you looked at our, we had our tree there, if we go to our slides, and if you look at uh, the one tree uh, that we have there, uh, which we always of the Abrahamic faiths, mm -hmm. and then the other one here is, which says, Islam says humanity is one family, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other one that says, I shall love all mankind. Because, exactly, exactly. You know, and I shall love all, and I shall serve all mankind. You see, because this is exactly, uh, if it comes from this big tree, the Abrahamic tree, if we go back to our slide, mm -hmm. it comes back, Islam is not, we're not just saying this, it's coming from a fundamental belief in the Bible between mm -hmm. Christians and Muslims, mm -hmm. that we are all from Adam and Eve and see the tree of humanity. Exactly. And, and the best, according to Islam, the best person is the one who serves humanity. So... Uh, I think the Muslims are doing it. Now, this is a big debate I want to share with you. <laughs> there is a big debate. Uh, you know, it's, I think there's a similar saying in the Bible, but there's a, in, in, in Islam most definitely, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Exactly. You see, you, you, and, and generally the Muslims have been like that. They are, they, all over there in the local areas, in the local towns and villages across the country, even internationally. They, they do, because, you know, it's part of their, their, their giving nature. But they do it, you know, unnoticed. They, they, they somehow, they're the, in fact, they say the best charity is the one which is done in secret. Now, somehow the other, it is, this is the charity side of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to agree with you on another aspect. I think nothing stops us when you said the word coming to understand that Muslims are not Indians. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this, we just came last week as if we, we went to a, uh, to a small township in Escort. Uh, it's called uh, Huben. Mm -hmm. And we did an outreach in the local town hall there. Okay. And the people were presently surprised. And I think, you know, we'll go for a quick uh, break. And when we'll come back and maybe we can talk about of more about how we can make ourselves to be coming out of more the vi more visible. More visible. Exactly. So I think just stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, we are busy uh, on this slot where we uh, talk about your comments and uh, your questions. Well, we don't have to, we're going to put that on hold. Uh, for this uh, episode because we have uh, Mr. Shadrach Madingwana in the studio with us and we are busy talking to him about, I think, what we're going to spend in this last uh, slot that we have. Let's share some ideas about how you are, you have, you've been in, involved in the community with your church, uh, with your uh, community workers, your pastors. Uh, we are involved in our side, with our communities. Mm -hmm. What, what suggestions can you give? How can we go around making that visibility more? What are some of the things you think we can be doing, <coughs> uh, Mr. Shedrick? Well, what is important is that the, the Muslim community and the Christian community, they need to formulate joint programs. 
okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that, and, and those programs must be aimed at empowering those communities. Right. Okay? Uh, it, it must be aimed at changing the attitude and understanding of both, of both religion in terms of its commonality. Uh -huh. okay? It is unfortunate that most Christians know nothing about Islam. Mm. However, the Islam community, they are quite aware about Christianity, okay, having, having the understanding that Christ is there in Islam. Right. But Christian, the, the difficulty for Christians to understand, to understand certain concepts and lifestyles of Islam, mm. it's, it's not there. So it's an, it's a, it is that kind of joint programs will also offer the Christian an opportunity mm. to understand the, the other religion. Well, you know, you're saying a very, very important thing, Mr. Sherek. I think if I, uh, you know, if I look back in apartheid days in our schools, you know, it was more, uh, we will regard it as, you know, it was Christian-centered education because it was a Christian government. Government, yes. But I think our present government, the new government, the democratic government, it's, it's doing, it's regarding all religions and even the, the, the religious classes during right living mm -hmm. and all, mm -hmm. it must expose the learners to all other religions. Okay. And I think so one place we can start is in the schools where I think it is happening slowly, that now slowly they are becoming to learn about if it's, if it's a, a Muslim festival, what are these festivals all about? I think it's happening in the workplace, many mm -hmm. corporate industries, mm -hmm. many people in the workplace as an ethos, as a result of a new government, uh, let's understand the diversity and let us understand who are Muslims in our country. And this, uh, Mr. Sedrek, it really it speaks well of our new democracy because if you look at what's going on in the West, there's so much of negativity against and conflict Muslims and conflict. Yes. And here you'll find in our country because of the spirit of Ubuntu, which is an African, uh, you know, uh, quality uh, that was there innate in, in the African nature and the African soil, it opens its arm to other cultures. So I think we need to we need to we need to use that concept of Ubuntu, mm. okay, and say what does Ubuntu say for the two religions? Mm. The two religions speaks of loving your neighbors, correct? Loving yourself. How do we take that concept of love and move out of our comfort zones, move out of our corners? Okay, and make God or Allah more visible to those who don't know him. Yeah, I think here you are saying something good. And uh, we have been doing this in a small way. And there are maybe there are some small groups doing it in a small way. But I think we, we need to foster these bridges and, and, and do it in a more vigorous way. Because I think you make an important point. The um, majority of the Christian community are not aware of what our standing is that we, we believe they, in they Jesus. Don't, they, don't know the, they, they don't know the five pillars of Islam. What do they mean? Mm. They don't understand the importance of Hajj. Mm. They don't, you know, so, so, so it is the responsibility of the Islam community to say these five pillars also applies exactly. to the Christian religion in the following manner. Well, so, that, so that the differences yes. can be eliminated. And let's take Jesus, peace be upon him, who's central to us, and, and, and Abraham, yes. peace be upon him, who said, because we are the Abrahamic family. Exactly. I think all these kind of things, if it's brought to the table, yeah. and simple pamphlets and simple discussion, and we'll come to realize, yes, we are the Abrahamic family. <coughs> uh, we may have a few differences on, on certain concepts and on certain issues, but as, as the basic thing is, we accept, we are not the Antichrist. Exactly. See, we are not anti. Christ. But those are the kinds of concepts they, that the Islamic community must promote. Um, a lot of Christians don't know that in the Quran there is a Joseph, there is an Abraham, there is a Moses. Yes. Okay. The Christian community think and believe that those those it's people only are, in the Quran. Are, it's only Muhammad in the Quran. Okay, <laughs> yeah. the Christian community they don't understand that Muhammad is uh, one of the prophets. Okay, mm. that came to come and complete what Jesus Christ came to come and, to come and do. Mm. So it, they, 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 because for you to foster understanding, people needs to have 
the correct information. So we need to have this, we, we need to go out of our way to create this program. We need to create this pro it's, it is very important. Mm -hmm. It is very, we, we, uh, South Africa, uh, remember where we come from. We come from a situation whereby people were di divided. T uh, 20 years down the line, we cannot allow that on the basis of religion. We need to scrutinize mm -hmm. what all the, kind, the, the, the forms of religion, what can we use to bring people together? Okay, and as a person who who is more interested in what I will call comparative religion, mm -hmm. this is the this is the way forward. Well, you know, as we come into the end uh, of our very interesting discussion, I would like to just highlight and and just get your view on this, and and, and we will definitely take this further. I I can tell you now. We'll speak to ITV, okay. and we're going to make a trip up your way, okay. either in Soweto and in Roshni and Ferenich and Val Triangle. We'll, let's work, because one of the things we, we discuss in this program, let's build the bridges in our local areas, in our local communities. Now, the interesting thing I want to, as we round up, you know, the, the common ground. You know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, you know, the, he, he's the descendant of Abraham, hmm? peace be upon him, from the second wife, Hagar, who is from Africa, okay. is from yeah. Egypt. She's an African lady from Egypt. And from Hagar, in Genesis 16.3, he got Ishmael, peace okay. be upon him. And from Ishmael came the Arabs and the Muslims. And from his first wife, Sarah, he had his second son, Isaac. Okay. So, you know, there were three shows that. So there is this, sometimes I think I spoke many times even to, to high-ranking priests, and they seem, tend to forget this African... The link, connection. The connection. Yes, and that's, and that's what we need to do. We need to, to bring that connections out. Okay? The, but do they, do, is that point spoken of in the church? That's what I want to know. Even our leaders as Muslims, but no, no, in the it, church, it, it, it they is, talk it, about Hagar as the African Egyptian lady, or no. is, you know, and the Ishmaelite branch. I just want to know, or is it also sometimes just overlooking and just concentrate on Isaac? Well, it's, 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 it is a point that, that you know, our churches, we, we do speak about it, but we don't... We don't expand okay. Okay, and look at the, the historical background of the characters. And, and how, it, how it's uh, coming through to, down. Down. To, to, to today's time. Today's time. Yes. Okay, and, and, and this is where my, my, my concern is. Lack of information. Mm. Okay? Um, it, 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 it's a very bad thing. But also, people with information who, and, and you don't share it, yes. what's, the, what's the good of that information? Very because true. information is meant to be shared. Correct. It's a human, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that belongs to humanity. It's, exactly. It must be shared to it humanity. Must be shared you to, know, better, to better our human lives. You know, it's, it's very important, you know, as we're ending, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know, he did his hajj, and, it, and he knew that's going to be his last hajj. And there is what we call a farewell a sermon he gave at the pilgrimage. Yeah, that, okay. It was called the farewell sermon. And after he did that farewell sermon, because being a prophet of God, he, he was told by God he, he won't be there next Hajj. But what was what you just said about sharing? And he said two things, which probably which we, uh, the Muslims know it, I'm reminding the Muslims by saying this and ourselves. He said two things. Those of you who are present, carry this message to those who are not, who are present. not present. He said that, number one. Number, that's how Islam came to Africa and China. Okay. The, his, his disciples took him seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he said, he, he raised his hands, he looked to the sky, and he says, God, you know, he's asked the people, I have done all that you gave me. I have given it. Exactly. And he asked the people, have I fulfilled? Have I given all that I have supposed to give you? And they said, yes. Then he turns, he said, I haven't kept anything, but I didn't hide any information. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I didn't keep anything. Anything. I've given I have gave it, it away. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that is very important also to, to give to humanity. You know, giving to humanity does not necessarily mean finance. Yes. You can yes. give to humanity in terms of the skills, the knowledge, the time that you have. I mean, I always say you have people right now who are in hospitals, okay, and the doctors are busy checking them, but they are not, they are not sick. They are lonely. Mm. They long for that compassion. Sure. And someone somewhere yes. has the time yes. to go and touch someone to change one's life. Well, that's what it's all about. Uh, I like what you're saying. Uh, I think, uh, you know, in Islam, one of our slogans there, you know, our banners, I-S-L-A-M. Islam believes that I shall love all humanity. Mm -hmm. I shall love all of mankind. I-S-L-A-M stands for that. Let's hope that we, me and you 
and the rest of the viewers, uh, you know, we would like to, we will, at the end of the program, we'll give them more details. Let's start carrying on building these bridges. Let's take it to the next step. We thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. For coming into the studio. Thank and you may much. God bless you and the efforts you're making. And may we take this to the next level to the community. Inshallah. Uh, thank you. Right. Assalamu alaikum to the viewers and to you. We'll see you. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Na tera khuda koi aur hai na mera khuda koi aur hai na tera khuda koi aur hai na mera khuda koi aur hai ye jo raaste hain juda juda ye maamla कोई और है